Hello, and welcome to Game Gems. Today, we're going to look at how to create customizable sprites, as well as make a basic character creation dialogue. It's a super easy feature to add, and players love to play dress up. So let's get started. Customizable sprites and 3D models for you graphic snobs are achieved by building the sprite out of a handful of sub-sprites, one for each part of the character you wish to modify. We'll start by creating a new scene in Godot to represent our character. Make sure the root node is a character body 2D. But if you want to get clever and use customizable sprites to build a bunch of NPCs quickly, then you can parent the sprite nodes under their own node and add that to any kind of node you want. This way, you can have customizable rigid bodies or static bodies or whatever without having to redo the entire thing. Your character body 2D will need one child for each part you wish to customize. As you can see by the screenshot, I went a little nuts. But we're only going to look at how to change the character shirt in this tutorial. You can follow the same process to handle the rest. While there are a couple ways to structure this, I chose to create a single sprite to represent a naked character, because one of the options I want for each body part is none. That way, a character can go shirtless or run around a dungeon with no pants on. Come to think of it, sounds like a great idea for a game. Anyway, uh, create a sprite sheet for your naked dude, then create a sprite as a child of the character body 2D and call it body. Enter the appropriate frame data so that it appears correct in the editor window. And you'll also need a few items of clothing, so create a couple of additional sprites for those as well. If you want the clothing to have customizable colors, use white as the color for the tintable parts. We'll see why shortly. Next, create an animation player and parent it to the character body 2D as well. You're going to need animations for all of your character's various states, and it's a fairly detailed topic. So if you don't know how to use the animation player node, I recommend checking out Heartbeast's Action RPG tutorial series here on YouTube. I'll link the relevant episode in the description below. For this example, I kept it simple and created a single frame idle animation for my character facing both front and back. Add a sprite for your character's shirt as the child of its character body 2D and set its texture to one of the shirts you've created. I made mine the same size as the character's body sprite so that it would be easier to animate in a sprite, but it's not necessary. You can totally just make it the size it needs to be and then manually position it within the node's local coordinates to line up. Once you have a shirt sprite, you'll need to add the sprite's node to each one of your animation sequences. It needs to have the same number of frames as the body sequence for the same animation, so if your body's front idle has, say, four frames, your shirt's front idle will also need four frames. Mine currently only has one because my character is not actually animated yet. Now that we have our sprite structured correctly, we want an easy way to add new items of clothing to our project. We'll do this using resources. Create a new script that extends resource. Give it a class name, I called mine avatar part, so that you can make new ones easily and then add three exportable variables. The name of the clothing piece, its texture, and its default color, which I've defaulted to white. This last bit is important because our character dialog will look at this color in order to tint the clothing, so it needs to always have a value. Create a folder under your project's resource path to hold the clothing resources for that body part. It's important that you keep each type of clothing, shirt, pants, whatever, in their own folder, because we're going to scan those folders on startup to populate our customization dialog. In the folder you just created, make a new avatar part for each item of clothing you created. In my case, I have a shirt, a sleeveless shirt, and no shirt, that last one is accomplished simply by setting the texture of that particular resource to null. You'll see why we made it a resource shortly. I also changed the default color of one of the shirts, just so that you could see the default color property in action once we wrote the code for it. And speaking of which, it's time to write the code for it. But first, let's be smart about this. We're going to need a UI component that lets us cycle through a list of options in both forward and reverse. We could use a drop-down component, but most games provide what's called a spinner, and Godot's spinner component doesn't really do what we need it to do, so let's write our own. The spinner is composed of a left and a right button with the name of the current value of the spinner in the center. As the player clicks on the buttons, that value changes. We want a spinner for each type of clothing that we can change for our character, so it makes sense to make it its own component. Create a new scene with an HBox container as its root, then add a button, a label, and another button as its child in that order. Attach a script to the HBox container and call it Item Selector. You can give it a class name, but you don't need to. The item selector needs to alert any interested nodes when its value changes, so let's define a signal to do that. The signal needs to know the body part it's supposed to change, as well as the new value, so we'll add those as parameters to the signal. Next, we need a directory to look in for all of the avatar parts related to this body part, shirts for example, and the category, which is the name of the body part node we want to customize in our character sprite. For example, if we named our character shirt node top, as I did, then the item selector component that modifies the character's shirt should have top as its category. I defined it as a string, so spelling counts, but if you want to be clever and you knew your body part nodes would never get reordered, you can use an enum as an index here instead. I'll leave that as an exercise to you if you want to make the relevant changes. 
Finally, we need references to all three of the UI components in our control, so we assign them via onReady variables. If you watched my previous video on exportable node paths, you might be wondering why I chose to use the dollar sign operator to grab the node references here, and the answer is that this is old prototype code that hasn't been updated in a while. Plus, it's just quicker to convey. As long as you get the references to the UI controls, it doesn't really matter how you do it. We're also going to need an array to store the clothing choices and an integer to track which one is currently being shown, so let's define them. When the item selector control is added to the scene, it needs to scan the folder of its assigned category and build a list of all the resource objects in that folder so that it can display them. We do this so that we can minimize the workload of adding new item choices. Simply create a new resource in the relevant folder and it will be magically added to the game the next time you start it up. Let's add a call to this currently undefined function in our ready method and then define it. The first thing we need to do is open the relevant directory and we do this with the dir access class. Open the directory defined in the exported directory variable and store a reference to that open directory in a local variable. We then check that variable to see if it's null. If not, the directory opens successfully. We then need to tell Godot to start listing the contents of the directory, and after that we can grab the first file name in that list with the getNext method of the DirAccess class. We can loop through this file list by repeatedly calling getNext until it finally returns an empty string, which indicates that we've hit the end of the file list. Once we've got a file name, we check it to make sure it's not a directory. This is generally good practice. It keeps you from having to care if the folder you're checking has subdirectories that might get listed by the directory object. If the file is not a directory, we append it to the resource directory path and attempt to load that file, then add it to our array. After that, another call to getNext gives us the next file to process for the next iteration of our loop. Don't forget the getNext call or your game will lock into an infinite loop. I'm definitely not speaking from experience here. Finally, we set the selector controls label text to the display name property of the avatar part resource loaded into the index position. Since we have specifically find index to be zero, that means it'll get the first resource in the list. The left and right selector buttons have their pressed signals mapped to the next item and prev item functions, respectively. These methods either increase or decrease the index value, wrapping it around the first or last index of the array once it goes out of bounds, depending on which direction we're going. Then, once the index is properly set, we call change selection to update the display, and we'll define that method now. It simply updates the label with the newly displayed resources display name property, then emits the signal we defined at the top of the file, passing in the category of the item as well as the resource file at the index. It'll be the responsibility of the avatar editor window that will make next to handle that signal. As usual, you're free to build the avatar editor UI however you like, but there are two things you'll need to include. One is your avatar. Simply drop an instance of your avatar sprite scene somewhere into the UI so that your player can see what they're editing. You'll also need an instance of the item selector control that we just built for each editable part of the avatar. In my case, I just have one for the avatar's top. The skin color button is currently non-functional, but will eventually be hooked up the same way I'm about to show you how to tint the clothing sprites. Once you have your UI built, add a script to it and grab a reference to your player avatar. You also want to connect your item selector's on-item selected signal to a function in this script. I called mine set part sprite. And of course, it needs the same arguments that the signal defines. First thing we do is query the avatar for its subnode named after the indicated category and get a reference to it. Then we make sure the resource has a texture defined. If it doesn't, we hide the clothing part. If it does, we show it, set its texture to the one defined in the resource, and change its self-modulate property to the resource's color. This last line is what will tint the sprite because the modulate property multiplies all the pixels by the color listed in the property. This has the effect of preserving black since its RGB values are all zero and tinting everything else. White, with all of its RGB values being one, will match the color exactly. This is only one of numerous ways to tint a sprite, by the way. Others include using a shader, but that's a little beyond the scope of this tutorial. If you'd like to see a video on various ways to replace colors in a sprite using shaders, let me know in the comments below. You can also stack a tintable sprite under non-tintable sprites with transparent areas to let the tinted texture show through, but that's a little more complex. Also note that this particular implementation doesn't let you change the color of the clothing via the dialog, but that's actually pretty easy to add. I'll leave it as an exercise to you to see if you can figure out how it's done. And there you have it. The only thing missing here is a way to save the user's sprite configuration, but it's pretty easy. All you need to do is keep track of the name of the sprite resource that the user selected for their character, and then when the user is happy with their choices, write that list of strings to disk. Again, if you'd like to see a tutorial on it, I can address it in a follow-up video. If you found this tutorial useful, bang the like button and subscribe to this channel for more game gems. See you next time!